Oh, well, let's get on with some questions. I've got one here from Shazad. He's got a 2017 Citroen C4 Grand Picasso with a bit of a problem with his sat-nav. Basically, he could be in the middle of Heathrow Airport and his car thinks he's in the middle of nowhere, which is obviously not ideal if you're trying to navigate somewhere. Now, the first thing to be aware of is that should you happen to flatten your battery or disconnect it, then actually the GPS might forget where it is or what it's doing. So what you need to do then is drive it around for about 20 miles or so so it can kind of get its bearings and its little brain will then work out exactly where it is and therefore where you are. Now, going by all the error messages you attach to your email, it does all point towards the GPS receiver or aerial. Now, also having a quick Google search, it looks like pretty much every Grand Picasso has a problem with this. So it might even be a bit of a design flaw. Now, the GPS receiver lives with the radio aerial on the back of your roof. And I suspect that there's a little rubber seal that stops all the rain and weather and whatever from getting inside into that important electronics. Now, if you're lucky, you might better find a good second-hand part on the internet. But actually, for less than £85, you should be able to buy a replacement part from Citroen themselves, and it might even come with a brand new rubber seal. So at least that way, you know where you are with this problem. So good luck with that. Now, I've got another question here from Tim Johnston. Now, he's just been rebuilding his Triumph Stag 3-litre V8 engine, and he wants to know the best way to make sure that he's bled the coolant system of all the air that might be in there. Now, in the past, I have been known to either jack a car up, put it on axle stands, or even park it on a slope to try and get the bleed screw to end up being the highest point in the coolant system. But either way, before you even turn on the engine, you should try and make sure that the radiator is as full to the brim as possible. Then you can turn your attention to the header tank or the fluid reservoir. Now, many classic cars like the Spitfire can be fitted with a kind of removable header tank that has an extra long hose that goes into the coolant system. And that way, you can then lift that up and make that the highest point of the cooling system. Now, obviously, you want to make sure that the engine is up to temperature, the thermostat is open, also the heater controls mean that's fully open, so the air has nowhere to hide. But if that doesn't even work, another thing you might want to think about is actually fitting a swirl pot. Now, as the name suggests, it's a pot <laughs> that allows the water to swirl. So the coolant would come in from the engine and it would actually go in through the top of the swirl pot. It would swirl around, causing a bit of a vortex. The water will drop to the bottom because it's slightly heavier and it will drop back out into the coolant system. But that allows the air to kind of escape from the water and then it goes to another pipe back into the expansion bottle. So that way it'll effectively self-bleed all the time you're driving along. And that might be the best way to ensure that your coolant system will be air-free forevermore. Got another question here from Robert who's got a 1943 Willis Jeep and he's actually quite interested in having his car actually stop when he operates the brake pedal. So he's asked about the high performance friction material we used on Wheeler Dealers on that brilliant Volvo PV 544, very catchy name. Now that friction material was so good, it actually made the Volvo's drum brakes perform like discs. And I was so impressed, I decided to use it on our 1916 Peking to Paris Rally Cadillac. In fact, because neither Cadillacs actually have any brakes on the front axle, it's vitally important that the rear axle brakes work rather well, particularly if you're going to be driving across Mongolia. The thought of doing that without any brakes is quite terrifying. So I modified the brakes on the 1916 axle, but actually we borrowed that from the 1918 car. So now it's back in the UK. The brakes on this vehicle are the upgraded ones. And what's really interesting about the brakes on the Cadillac is it's got like a what looks like a normal drum brake system. And it's got shoes on the inside, but it's also got these kind of bands on the outside and both of those have been replaced with this special high performance material so hopefully it'll stop on a dime as the saying goes. Now the people who made this for us are a company based in Orange County in California and they're called racebreaks.com. Right let's see how those wires are doing. Thanks for stopping by the workshop if you enjoyed the video even just a little bit then click like. If you hated it well then click like three times. Also remember to leave your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And obviously we'd love to see you again soon, so please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell for notifications of when the next video is published, or when I have some intriguing news.